Many of us have fond childhood memories of chasing fireflies at dusk throughout the summer in parks or backyards. We could scoop a lightning bug out of the air with our cupped hands, let it walk up our fingers while its lantern flashed, and then watch it lift its wings and fly from our fingertip back into the night. Sometimes we kept fireflies in glass jars to make a private little lantern. Children very soon find, though, that those fireflies don't live through the night. They should be released again back to the night before we go to bed. Hello there, I'm Barbara Williams. I'm a volunteer for the Natural Land Institute and for the Forest Preserve District of Winnebago County. I wanna tell you some things today about fireflies. Fireflies are uh, common insects in our area. They are lovely and enchanting insects. They add a layer of beauty and mystery to the night and they're easy insects to love. They don't bite, they don't sting, they don't eat our crops, they don't eat our garden plants, they're not pests, they don't annoy us. They are a very good measure of the health of our environment. They're sensitive to the health of the soil, the moisture, uh, chemical contaminations, pesticides, and they respond very rapidly to habitat degradation and restoration. So it's distressing to find that firefly populations are declining, but we can help them if we understand something about them. Fireflies start out as an egg. After two or three weeks, the egg hatches into a larva. The larva live for a year or two years sometimes on the ground in the leaf litter. And the larva are predators. They feed on other insects, worms, slugs, snails, other small invertebrates. When they reach the end of the larval stage, they pupate just like a caterpillar making a cocoon or a chrysalis. They enter a dormant period as a pupa that lasts two to three weeks to complete their transformation into an adult. The adults only live for three to four weeks. They eat very little, although some feed on nectar. Their goal is to find a mate and lay eggs and start the cycle all over again. These insects create the light on their lamps through a chemical reaction called bioluminescence. That makes light with no heat they use their lanterns to communicate with other fireflies and especially to find a mate. Flashing is their courtship song. Fireflies and lightning bugs are two different names for the exact same thing. Fireflies are not actually flies though. They are beetles and like all beetles, they have two antenna, six legs, four wings and three body parts. They have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Their front two wings form covers for the back two wings to protect them. And the back two wings are the ones they really use for flying. When I say beetles, many people think of something tough and hard shelled with clawed feet like this, or maybe like this. However, there are many soft bodied beetles like this one, or like this, or like fireflies. All fireflies have a head shield called a pronotum that protects their head. They can draw their head back completely under it, or they can stick their head out to have a little better look around. All fly firefly larvae glow, and most of their pupa also glow. Adult fireflies uh, mostly glow, but not all of them. There are some fireflies that fly during the day and they have no need for lanterns, but many fireflies that fly at night uh, have the lanterns and they either glow steadily or they flash intermittently. Some other insects and insect larvae also glow. And a lot of these uh, larvae that glow, including fireflies, are called glow worms. There are about 2000 species of fireflies in the world. It's a very diverse group and they are found all around the world except in the polar regions where it's really just too cold. There are about 125 species in North America 
And in, in this part of Northern Illinois and Southern Wisconsin, there's maybe 25 species. So how can we help fireflies continue to light up our nights? One way is to make our nights darker. Our artificial lighting has a huge impact on wildlife. Outdoor lights interfere with fireflies' ability to find mates. The males literally cannot find the females in an area ablaze with lights. A few fireflies fly during the day, but most need the darkness so their flashes can be seen from a long distance away. We can help them by reducing our use of outdoor lighting, eliminating unneeded lights, using dimmer lighting, and replacing white bulbs with yellow LEDs that attract fewer insects. We can put shields on lights so the light only goes where it's needed and wanted. We can use motion detectors on security lights. This reduction in light pollution will help many other creatures like moths that get disoriented by strong outdoor lighting. And it will improve our view of the stars overhead. To help fireflies, we can reduce our use of pesticides. The chemicals that kill pest insects also kill beneficial insects. Fireflies, butterflies, pollinators, moths, even dragonflies. When you're working out in your yard, remember that firefly larvae and many other creatures live in the top layer of the soil. They need the leaf litter, the sticks, the fallen leaves that are on the ground here. This sort of thing. That's where they spend the winter. That's where they live a lot of their lives. This, this layer of detritus on the floor of the forest protects uh, the cocoons of moths, chrysalises of butterflies. It preserves all the food that the firefly larvae are eating, the worms, the little bugs, the snails. So they need the moisture, they need the protection of all that forest floor or even prairie floor detritus that, that naturally covers the ground. This is nature's mulch and it's the very best kind and it's free. All the nutrients that these trees take up out of the soil falls back down again in the form of sticks and bark and chunks of leaves and all that stuff, the trunks themselves eventually. And that returns those nutrients to the ground right where they came from. So this is why we call this a, a nutrient cycle. It's a, it's a very efficient way of recycling nutrients and of creating the mulch that many, many insects uh, and small creatures live in. One last thing that we can do to help fireflies is to provide places for the adults to live. When they hatch into adults, their habits become very different. Many of the adults will go high up into the trees and spend most of their time high in the trees. Other adults spend their life very low to the ground. They fly low, they roost low, but many of them spend their, the nighttime flying at mid-level ranges and they spend their days hiding from predators in tall, dense vegetation. So we need to provide them with more fairly tall, dense vegetation so that the adults can spend the day in safety. They don't have very long to find a mate and to, and to reproduce and lay eggs. So they need to make the most of it. This behind me here, you can see, I have a, a prairie restoration. The prairie grasses and plants were perfect for fireflies. It was dense, it was tall, a lot of places for them to hide and, and find cover. Mowed lawn does not support uh, fireflies. It's too short, it's too hot, it doesn't have enough moisture. They can't get the moisture and the protection that they need from mowed lawn. So they will often at night, they will fly over mowed lawn, but they will not spend the day there. They need, they need more cover for that. So if you can uh, create a dense flower garden, if you can leave an area of uh, kind of uh, unruly native plants. You'll be making the fireflies very happy and a lot of other creatures too.